Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. We're going to take a look at Zebralet today, which is the introductory version of Zebra, the big Trojan horse version as they describe it on their website from UHE. Now we covered Hive the other day again for pads, and we're going to use the same pad and have a look at what Zebralet can offer. To get things kicked off, this is a one oscillator plugin, and there's four, I think, on the actual version, and that gives you a lot of power using four oscillators, but this delivers some amazing results just being, well, it's free, obviously, but only one oscillator. And as you can see, it's slightly different to the conventional synth in the way it's laid out. So let's just have a quick look over the UI. So first things first, we can right click and we can set a UI size and we have text anti-aliasing and obviously gamma settings as well. So it's really handy to have and I've set it to around 170% just to kind of keep some screen real estate as well for other things. And first, starting at the top, we have tune, effects and phase. So we have control over the phase here and we have a few options and tuning options here. So we'll have a quick look at those whilst we're just playing a sound. And we have the tune section here to tune the oscillator, add detune, add modulation source, which we have one here and portamento and vibrato as well. In the effects section, this is directly linked to the effects at the bottom, and this controls how much of that effect is shaping the sound. So it's not just applying it to the sound, it's helping to shape and create something new, which is really interested in the preset design world. Then we come to the main section in the middle. We have the waveform, the viewer, and the VCA here. So on the waveform, we have the wave warp feature, which cycles through those 16 tables. And we have a mod source here, which can be connected again to various places. And we have various presets as well. That's the same for up here. We have different settings there, but we also have different presets for the mod envelope and things like that. And we have a resolution. So this is how reactive it is to this. You can see that's very fine or very basic. Come standard in the middle, I think. And then on the waveform section in the middle, we have our modes for viewing the and shaping the sound, but we have Geomorph, Geoblend, Spectromorph, and Spectroblend as well. So we'll have a look at those. We're not going to go super detailed on that. Plus, I haven't even looked at the user guide yet. Just a quick look over just to get a gist of what everything is doing. And finally, at the bottom, we have modulation, effects, and presets. And as you can see on the, the modulation tab, we have our usual ADSR settings and everything else there, including some presets, which I mentioned earlier. We have our window editor here, so we can tailor our sound and our modulated source. And also we have our global LFO here. So global LFO and LFO1 here, which can be attached to different things. So LFO1 can be used to control the mod source up here and things like that. On the effects tab, we have chorus and delay here. So these are the two main things that Zebralet uses to help shape sound. And it's really interesting to see how things work. It's quite pleasing on the ear sometimes. Finally, we have presets. And you can see here, I've got the pads folder selected at the moment, but we have many other things, very similar to how Hive 2's preset browser is launched and visualized, but on a smaller scale. And to really gauge how Zebralet performs, I'm going to play the string section that I already have. I have the pad layout. I'm going to use the preset comeback, and we're going to modulate some of these sources. So I'm just going to move some of the parameters around so you can hear what everything does and how it affects the sound. section down here is the shape that is controlling this FX1 to actually modulate and move around.
that shows you how Zebralet can perform one oscillator and just a handful of the features that Zebra offers. I really like how the strings have been pulled back. There's limited features on there, but yet the sound is uncompromised. If you like the sound of Zebra, let, let me know in the comments and if you already use it in things or if you've actually got Zebra as well, let us know what you think about it. Now I want to draw your attention to Geomorph. You saw there at the end that I switched to Geoblend but uh, this preset wasn't built around that. We have four settings here which we have Geomorph and Geoblend so Morph just in simple terms just switches between those waves and you can see it kind of morphs them smoothly there as it cycles through each wave section. But on GeoBlend, we get a blend of those sounds rather than it just cycling through individual wave sections. So let's pick another preset here that might just start on the GeoBlend. There we are. We have up to 128 vertical columns to edit, but at the same time, the blend is a blend of these sounds, whereas the morph is morphing singular parts together. And with the blend modes, you are getting not just a morph of that sound, that's actually blending the sounds together as well. So whereas the morphing is just morphing into the next table, this is actually blending and creating some really unique textures. We're not gonna go super deep into the waveforms and the blend modes and things like that, but if you wanna see that, just let us know in the comments and I'm be sure to cover it at some point. And as a result, we have a really nice smooth warping feature here. So let's just have a listen to what happens. we can help invoke those upper harmonics, those higher notes from that particular MIDI section that I have by using the wave warp here and you can see that we have these different waves and it introduces different harmonics. As you could see in the middle section there when we was using the wave warp we could invoke higher tones to come through easier and quicker by having a different wave shape here using the geo blend mode. And you can obviously modulate that as well, which is really handy to move it around and just create a sense of movement, space, depth in your track. It helps to invoke all of that. And finally, to draw this to a close, my favorite part of this plugin has to be the effects section up here and how we blend these effects and use it to shape the sound. And on effects one, we have fundamental and on effects two, we have this registerizer. That took me a few takes to say that for some reason. But we have all of these different options here to control and we can use on a plus side or on a negative side value to change the sound and shape it. So let's have a listen to what Fundamental does. Here that it gets a lot more intense near the middle there. I've not read the manual on this, but it sounds to fade off when you take it left or right, and as you put it close to the middle, it gets more intense again. And that's just giving me the idea of fundamental, like the fundamental frequency, the closer you get to it, the more intense it will get. Then registerizer here, let's have a listen to what this does. a really interesting one you get a more smoother sound as it starts at the top and it starts to introduce that saw wave back in and it's 
nice to introduce that sharper texture back into the sound because it's a very soft sound when that is set to there. Just gives you the option to add a little bit of sharpness in there without having to change really anything on the whole synth to get that sound. I do want to make a note that we have settings here, single, dual, quad and 11, and we also have quadric, linear and v-slope here as well. So these also help shape the sound. As you can hear, this helps to add a lot more depth into a sound. If we change this as it's playing, just like on the previous bit of demo I did, it starts to get thinner or it just doesn't apply any detune at all because we're using a singular source. You can hear it's just gone to that singular sound. Dual in there. gives you a lot more depth in the sound and it starts to build up those layers and make that one oscillator sound absolutely huge. And that is Zebralette by UHE. Head over to the website, go and grab your free copy. And I just want to point out that all of the UHE stuff appears to be Catalina ready. They've got it announced at the top of their page and I'm using macOS Catalina. So for those Mac users out there, these all do work. And that includes all of the bigger products, including Hive 2 and everything else. So really, really handy for Mac users there as we're going through a bit of a painful time having 32-bit plugins removed. And once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe and bell icon because that will let you know when I upload videos so you're one of the first to see it. And finally, drop me a comment and let me know what you thought of the video and what you think of Zebralette as well. It'll be really handy to hear what you think about it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.